In this video I will show you the different options you can set in source tools for your idling sessions. Uh, if you don't know how to use source tools you should start with um, another video which is for beginners. Uh, it should be in the video responses. Anyway, uh, for those who already use source tools, uh, you might want to do some tweaking for your uh, sessions for idling. So to do this, you open source tools and you select the configuration profile. Uh, you select the profile you use to idle, normally to be easy spectate. Now for the connection manager settings, you go in add on manager in option number five. Um, so first we'll quickly look at the basic settings. Uh, here the, you don't need to do much tweaking, there is nothing much you can do. But I'll just quickly explain what they are. The first one is to enable, disable the add-on, it should be already on. Launch TF2 in text mode, you can select to, you can turn it off if you want to use uh, Team Fortress 2 with video while idling. Third one is for using on computers that do not have DirectX 8 support, like a video card that sucks or whatever. You can set this to 1 and Team Fortress 2 will not use uh, any requirement for Direct 3D. Even though it's text mode, it's still going to check for your DirectX. So um, the risk for using that is uh, it will destroy your video settings if you don't close source tools properly. But if you use this on a crappy computer, it doesn't really matter. Uh, fourth option, no video, no sound. You don't. I don't think you want sound while idling. Uh, fifth, um, it's automatically connect right at launch. Sixth option is disconnect on reconnect, pretty much the whole basis of the connection manager. And seventh is just that um, you might want to see the server name when you connect to it. In crash recovery, uh, so it's also on by default if Team Fortress 2 crashes, it will be relaunched. Um, if let's say TF2 jams, it doesn't crash but it just hangs there after four minutes of no activity, it will be restarted. Uh, the third option is off by default, it's to start source tools when the computer crashes. The problem is if you crash source tools but the computer didn't crash, then next time you reboot, source tools going to start with it. So it's to use at your own well, risk, as in uh, if your computer crashes during the night and so on, you might want to use this so that when your computer reboots, source tool is going to start with it. Option number four is uh, whether, whether or not you want to restart Steam if source tools fails, uh, if Team Fortress 2 fails to restart. Um, and fifth option is how many times Team Fortress 2 has to fail to restart before restarting Steam. Uh, by default, it's four times. If four if Team Fortress 2 fails to restart four times in a row, then uh, it might help to restart Steam. Advanced connection management is really where you can do some tweaking. Uh, the first option is for retrying the connection every X minutes. So let's say you want to reinitiate the connection to your server uh, just for refreshing, let's say, your backpack connection or Steam connection. Uh, you can set this. I would recommend something over one hour, so it's in minutes, so it's 60 minutes and over. Uh, second one, you can ignore it, don't worry about it, it's automatically calculated. Third one is if you want to switch server in case you end up on a server that has lost connection to Steam, you don't want to stay on it too long, so you can put it to uh, something like every hour or two hours or three hours. However, I recommend that you really make sure your servers in your list are pretty stable. Uh, fourth option is to return to the beginning of the list. So you can have like a couple of servers at the beginning of your list who are very good, and then the other ones are just in case uh, the first servers are down or full. And then when you're one of those extra servers, backup servers, uh, you might want to go back to the beginning of the list um, after a few hours just to make sure, you know, just to try to get back in. Um, and the fifth option is not to return to the beginning of the list if you are connected to a server number that's uh, equal or lower to the value. So let's say you put it to 5, the value, then if you are connected to the fifth server and the timer for returning to the beginning of the list triggers, uh, kicks in, then you will not return to the beginning of the list because you are on one of the servers uh, on the top of your list already. Um, also, no, option number six is if you don't want to connect to a server that's almost empty because a drop rate can be very low if the server is empty. So by it's been known that it's about four players or five players minimum to get a good drop rate. Uh, option number seven is just to make sure that the map name contains achievement, idle, or idling. 
so that you don't end up connecting to a server with uh, normal maps and just sitting there wasting space. Uh, number eight is just if you want to use a different list for the servers, you can have different text files with different lists, like here, user files, server list, you can have different text files and you can specify a different one if you want. Uh, and the number nine is relating to the crash recovery, as in how long you give Steam to restart and verify the game cache, because every time Steam is restarted by source tools, it will verify Team Fortress 2's game cache just to be sure that there's no problem, and that can take a very long time, so I recommend not changing this value. So that's it for the um, intermediate tweaking of source tools for idling. I will make other videos for the other features, so thank you for listening.